So I'm Janet LaFleur and I'm with the Tempo, I'm a Director of Marketing. And I'm here today to talk about the Tempo Digital Archive and our three creative strategies for digital archiving. So what we're noticing is that the archiving archive is taking a different role in people's workflows. What we heard before was mostly archive was like a last step in the process. You ingested, you did all your editing, and then when the project was done, um, you'd either write to the archive right away or you might broadcast it first. But at any rate, the archive was like this last step in the process. And in many cases, the archive was back on the tape and it went into some dusty storeroom that didn't make it very easy to reuse content. But nowadays, the archive is becoming more of a central element in the workflow. People are using it right after ingest to store raw footage. They're using it during edit to optimize storage. And of course, they're using it for their completed works at the end. So what you can do with this is you can use the archive for storage management as well as content preservation. So one of our customers we have in common with Isilon is a broadcast media giant. I can't name the name yet because they're still doing the installations and getting everything done. But they, um, they had some very specific issues they were dealing with. The first was they were getting more and more HD content. So of course with HD, the amount of capacity they needed for their storage system was you know, explosively larger. You know, power of um, two to six times more were needed for HD. And then they were having more and more beyond HD, 2K and 4K entering their workflows. So what they noticed was anything that they wasted, any place where they were duplicating storage or really saving things on disk they didn't need, it was being duplicated or worse. The second big issue they were dealing with is they're getting more and more of their new footage captured on um, reusable media, like the hard drives and the compact flash that go with the P2 camera. And that was coming into the workflow without its natural backup that you had before. When you had tape-based capture, you could just put the tape on a shelf. But now it was going into the workflow and it wasn't really protected to the level they wanted. They wanted to be able to protect that raw footage. So what did their environment look like? You know, I just increased this number this morning because the SE told me that no, 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 it's not 150 terabytes anymore. It's like 600. They're bringing more and more um, disk drives online. I believe they're Isilon, all of it. But it's a very large installation. They have like 70 users using this Isilon. They also have local storage on their editing workstations, whether they be Mac or um, Windows. And they also have some XC in there. They use a Windows-based system just for Nearline with some cheap disks in there. And then lastly, they're using a tape library, a really large one, as their deep archive or offline storage. So that's what their environment looked like. But they had some problem areas. We kind of touched on these before. The first one is that their raw footage is coming off the cameras, and it's going into the Isilon, and they wanted to back that up. It's right now it's not protected. Well, before this, it wasn't protected. The second issue was they have so many editors working, their archivist was being bothered for mundane tasks like retrieving a previous project so an editor could get started on a new project. So they wanted, you know, they were having to wait. We wanted to make that easier. The third thing was they, were, they had this area on their Isilon where an editor would drop files that they had completed for another editor to pick up. And um, that was getting growing out of control. And so they felt like a lot of that was maybe content that had already been, ended up in a completed work, but it was still there in that Isilon shared area. So these three areas, they brought in a Tempo Digital Archive to solve these three problems. And um, really briefly what Ada, we call it, the Tempo Digital Archive does, is it has multiple ways to do the archiving. You have, can do it directly through a user interface, through a scheduled task that runs you know, daily or nightly. And, um, also through application triggered events. And then we also support all the different kinds of devices they wanted, both the disk, remember that Nearline, they wanted something that supported Nearline as well as tape. And um, they needed the search and retrieval. 